Hello with another week of Information Beyond with Dr. Parviz Rashvand as our guest. This week, I want to touch upon how do we find ourselves in this immense world of information, Dr. Parviz? Welcome to our podcast. Yes, that's a very good question. First of all, thank you again for having me here. I enjoy doing this podcast with you because this is a chance for me to reach out to more audience. And my goal as a teacher is to spread the word around. What we talk about is the truth. Truth is different than reality. Now, Nikola Tesla, which is known by almost everybody nowadays, has a very famous quote. He says, to understand the secret of the universe, think about energy, frequency, and vibration. So these are characteristics of energy because energy travels as wave, as you know. And... Uh, in preschool or high school, we learn that matter is, in, is energy or is creation of energy. And matter also could go back to energy. Nothing will be destroyed in between, but there is ability to shift between matter and energy. <laughs> so make, to make this simpler, if you look at every object around us as a presentation of some form of energy, so we live in a universe which is containing unlimited amount of energy. Energy is information. I come to your home, you open the door with a smile on your face while you look at me, or you open the door while you are frowning at me. How much of a difference should I feel based on the information I just received from by looking at your face? Correct. The first one Huge. will open me up in every way. The second one, opposite in, in every possible angle. I will lose my appetite. My heart starts to beat. I become angry. My blood pressure will, will go skyrocket high. And even you take a sample of the sweat on my skin, it's totally different between scenario one and two. You didn't even touch me. You may not even know me. I'm just a guest, somebody among every other guest who's invited to your home. What happened to me? I received information and I acted upon it at the conscious level or mostly the subconscious level. I didn't realize that how should, how much adrenaline I needed at that time to respond. My body designed it. It controlled it. So it was controlled by me, but it's not by me. This is the difference between conscious and subconscious. So whatever we look at under a microscope or way out there in the universe, regardless of the scale, is a field of energy. Now, I think I've, I've answered your question about what is this? And then how do we navigate? Mm -hmm. This is the second part of your question. Navigation means I need to find the right path. I need to reach to my destination, not to be lost. Right. All I need to do is to understand what signal to pay attention to. Otherwise, in this unlimited ocean of information, I'm receiving unlimited number of signal at all time. Which one suits me or not? Correct. Our autopilot picks up the ones which are automatically suiting me. For example, I cannot have a piece of stone as my food, uh -huh. and I'm looking for something that will nourish me. At the conscious level, I realize, uh-oh, continuing my friendship with this person is gonna harm me or my family. I choose to stop or the other way around. Correct. No, this is this is a, a talk that I hear amongst many people, especially I think with social media, and that's a whole different podcast, but where do we put everything that's toxic aside and how do we select what's best for us? Okay, good question. If you look at your pink fingerprint, it shows that you are a very, very unique individual in this universe. No one from the first of creation to the very end, as long as it lasts, has ever had that fingerprint. So that means that you are a very, very unique point of energy, okay? Now, what suits you could be different what I need to be suited. True. So depending on what is good for you, you attract things. You see, imagine you want to buy an apartment. They offer you two different apartments in two different buildings in the same neighborhood, same range of yeah. price. You go to the first one immediately as soon as you enter, you say, oh my God, I'm not going to like this. Uh -huh. I, there's something here. I, it doesn't make me feel good. The other one on the, on, on, on the opposite way, it opens you up. You say, oh my God, I don't want to get out of this place because there are antenna systems. We call it the chakras at another level beyond this body. 
that picks up the compatibility of frequencies around you. In my case, I prefer the first apartment rather than the second one mm -hmm. because my antennas are different. And what are these antennas? Depending on who you are, what you are, your, you, the way you think, your experience of the past, your speculations of future, all together plus trillions of other pieces of information all together constantly create what we are, what we need at the moment. So, so no two people no, can compare themselves and that say, if that's true. good for that person, it must be good for me. Yes, of course. But there is one thing that you have to, everybody should understand. And that is, in order to be successful in life, to leave a good memory behind and to help everything in universe to function better, we need to follow the universal law and order. That means this universe was created for a certain purpose. What was the purpose, you think? To accommodate life. Right. So the universe created for suns to happen so that planets take shape around them. And occasionally some of them who fit within the right energetic environment, yes. it starts producing life. Uh -huh. It starts from microorganism and then it evolves into multiple uh, kind of other creatures, ultimately a human being. Now, this universe, with the goal it has, it has to keep things in balance for the life to start. Imagine if Earth was a bit closer to sun or yeah. smaller or larger in size or rotating faster or slower. In none of these examples, life would be the same as we are experiencing now. It is impossible. So True. to have the life the way we experience it, we need to stay within the frame of balance. Now, if my action creates better balance at the end, imagine I'm a one who shares, who tries to solve problems, who does not add unnecessary problems, who doesn't want to break or damage the opposite way it wants to. So you create balance. You help this universe to move on towards its goal easier. The opposite way uh, is applied too. If my action ultimately creates more imbalances, I act opposite of the consciousness of the creation which had the intention to produce life or accommodate life or help the life to thrive. It starts from very simple kind of quality life. Yes. It goes on yes. and on. Yeah, yeah, There's no end in yeah, anything. It's like people who break the rules, for Exactly. Example. Then, then... I stay on the opposite side of the intention of the creation. If the intention of the creation is a perfect balance itself, the point of singularity, the moment before the Big Bang, the zero but not meaning of nothing, meaning plus, minus, uh, plus and minus infinite together, minus one plus one, minus ten plus ten, minus infinite plus infinite, in a perfect balance. If that is the point of singularity, which is the point of, of light, the source, the more I produce light, I get closer to that. Or if I produce darkness, I far, stay farther away because it's my choice. But the same way as our fingerprint, and a little bit later on, I'll explain how it happens. Yes. In the field of information, we create a space that suits us based on the action and the thought Amazing. and the energy we produce or we create. I want you to touch upon the antenna, that our body is an antenna. What is that exactly? Oh, sounds very good. Okay. In the example of I going to a party, let's say your party, you are the host, I mentioned that. Yeah. So this information that came into me had to be absorbed by me first and then analyze and then react upon it. You're a physician. You should know this. At every given second, our physical body receives, analyzes, and reacts to about 40 trillion pieces wow. of information. Per second, right now our body knows which blood vessel in, our, in, in us should be constricted or dilated yeah. and how much, how much oxygen to be received to that particular cell and more to the other ones. Which kind of um, reaction should I do to the signal that I receive? You just nod your head. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, not millions, billions of actions should happen in order to accommodate that. I'll make it simpler. While you're sitting right now here, imagine your body needs only this much thyroid hormone. Huh? The moment you want to stand up, suddenly it needs this much. Instantly, 
plus billions of other actions to, to change in order to accommodate this movement. Otherwise, we faint, we fall, we can't keep our balance. So in order to understand what we are, where we are, and how to respond, we need to receive the signals first. Signals are energy. Energy is information, so it comes by wave. So antennas are supposed to be there. In, bio, in, in physiology, cell physiology, in the beginning of medical school, they teach us, yeah, the cells, the membrane of the cells accommodate a lot of different antennas sticking out, and they respond to the ligands, a biochemical ligand, which could be a hormone, which could be an enzyme. Anything, Whatever right. it comes, it fits the antenna, which right. is like a key and the lock, yes. it has to be precise. Yes. And then it triggers the message and the cells put this message in action and produces whatever that is supposed to. Today, the scientists have proven hundreds of times more than physical antennas to react to biochemical uh, ligands. We have other antennas which respond to biophysical uh, signals. Biophysical signals. Our cells are using microwave energy in order to talk. The cells constantly produce light, so we are they're ejecting light all the time. Every time that heart is pumping, it, it is injecting information through light into the blood itself. So these antennas exist not only on the surface of the cells in order to respond to the biochemical compounds, but also to the sound and waves as well, hundreds of times more. Like, you go to one of these uh, tall hotels and look at the old uh, houses in Dubai, you see a lot of antenna dishes on the, yes. similar to that, something yes. similar to that. Now, this is on the physical body. How about our emotions? If you think about having a sour lemon in your hand, and close your eyes and um. feel it, smell it, and try to taste it and cut through it and see the juice coming and put some salt on it and then squeeze it. My yeah. mouth is already yeah. full. So what happened? There's no real lemon in my hand. Why did my body respond to it? So what is the difference between the actual lemon and the thought of the lemon, the impact on our body? Right. So this idea has to be received. So we have antennas on the physical body. Body, yeah. We have antennas on the energy body. Chakras are some of them, and there is more and more. And there is one more thing that I can elaborate further on this subject. Of course, we all know about encephalogram, electroencephalogram, electrocardiogram, things like that. Now, they don't need to put the probes on the surface of the scalp to pick up the electrical impulses of the brain anymore. They used another device called magnetoencephalogram. The probe of the machine stays about one foot away oh my from gosh. the head. So it sounds like the brain starts to broadcast signals and the machine picks it up up here. In my office, I have a laminated piece of golf news back in 2010, I think. It talks about new invention of a joystick in a, for, for video game that you don't have to hold on to anything anymore. You look, the, the receiver uh, responds to you to the way you look and then it performs. Wow, you don't need to shoot physically. You look and you have the intention to shoot on the video screen. It, it happens the way Amazing. that you want it. So it means the body starts ejecting information and if the right antenna is there, like the right antenna to respond to my remote controller, right. now I can change the TV set, I can change the channel, I can, not TV set, I mean the channel, the color, a lot of information yeah. can change. Yeah. Similar idea, so we are constantly broadcasting something. My so goodness. the brain is an antenna, yeah. the cells are antenna and we have 70 trillion of these cells in her body and every one of them is average of is having average of 70 millivolt of transmembrane potential. Right. If you put a voltmeter in a cell, in an alpha cell, 70 millivolt in one little single cell, that's a lot. And then, as I said, we have like 60, 70 trillion of it's these amazing cells. amazing because, so you know, some the... days when, you know, we're not always at our best or in, in days that we are, we wonder what is it that makes that difference? And we we have such high expectations of ourselves, but... With everything you're explaining, it's 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 just amazing how much information we're receiving in any single moment, you know. But um, it's all like you said; it's about who we are and us. The way we navigate it is by, for me, by knowing where we want to go. You know, it's like a roadmap, and all our roadmaps are different. You know, it's leading us maybe to the same place, but we have a different way to get there. My way will be different than your way. And 
basically we have to be in the moment from what I get and be happy that we are achieving even a step at a time. And imagine, we're getting there. Imagine something happens and it makes you really, really feel very good. All the cells in your body starts to feel that. Or the opposite way. What happens? Let's see. An idea comes to your mind. Somebody will call you with the good news. You hear something or you see something. So in your mind, you realize something amazing is Correct. happening. This feeling of goodness is immediately broadcasted into the brain as the antenna that received this information. Now, that was at the level of mind, thoughts. Mind. This is not the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain downloads that information, whether it is positive or negative, depending on what kind of information it is, the brain has the ability now to produce all the hormones and enzymes and the neurotransmitters to respond to that. And then it's from incredible. there, the central nervous system starts to ejecting all this information to the rest of the body. So every cell in your body starts to jump up and down out of happiness or become sad and depressed. So brain is not... So let's choose the happiness then, <laughs> for sure. It's not the major uh, organ to produce all these things. It actually interprets things. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, our mind gives a meaning to it. Maybe there's no meaning for the brain. It just does it the way that a computer system is supposed to do it. It's the CPU. It is controlling the elements, which one should be at what point to keep the balance. But what comes to the brain is beyond yeah. Uh -huh. So the brain absorbs the information through its own antennas at the physical and the non-physical level. And then now the entire body starts to implement that feeling or that uh, speculation or interpretation, whatever it is, to the rest of the body. Truly incredible. Yeah. Truly. Uh, Dr. Parviz, what is matter and non-matter part of us? Okay, that's a very good question. What I'm going to tell you about uh, answering this question could be applied to understanding the creation as well because everything is connected and it follows the same rule. The matter part of the creation is a very, very, very small amount of what there is. The fact is that we don't see it. For example, all we see around us, which we think is everything, is a reflection of the visible light. The visible light, you remember those seven colors? starting from red at the bottom with low vibration to purple at the top with the high vibration. If you go a little bit above purple, which is infrared, or a little bit below, which above the purple, which is ultraviolet, or, or ultraviolet, below red, yeah. which is infrared, you won't see any one of them anymore. Only those seven colors. Now, did you know that the proportion of that seven visible light colors in the beam of light from the sun is only one piece out of 10 billion pieces there. So imagine there's $10 billion on the floor. I take $1 and I say, I see everything, but there's so much. So we don't see it. We're not supposed to see it. That's why until about 10, 15, 20 years ago, the scientists didn't know about the dark matter or the dark energy in the universe. They thought the energy of the universe come from the bright side. Then they realize it's less than 5% actually. There's some that come from the dark side. That's how they could discover it because they couldn't see dark matter or dark energy or analyze them using telescopes or the regular uh -huh. uh, equipment they have in astrology labs or things like that. Our body is the same too. What you see at the surface, which is the physical body, is a very, very, very small vibration of the truth in us. Is whatever that projects through this physical and uh -huh. material life. Think about your memories, your emotions, Think about your perception, your thoughts, your beliefs. Where are they? Where do we keep our beliefs? It's not in the physical body. It comes from something else, but it has such a strong impact on us. Imagine a child growing up feeling that he's not good enough because he was never loved or the opposite way. You see the boundaries that now is created around them. I feel those are stronger than the matter. Uh, exactly, yeah. because Much this stronger. is the strongest influence on us, our thoughts, our belief. This comes from the state of mind. Emotions are processed in another layer of energy. Uh -huh. They all are beyond our physical body. Uh -huh. So the reflection of our non-physical part is as large as the universe itself. In quantum science, if we want to check somebody, the patient, the client doesn't have to be physically present at the office. 
You could go to Mars. I promise I can check you to see if you're happy there or not because your quantum energy is all over the universe. They, these things were discovered back in 1920s, how quantum started. Amazing. Mm. So make sure you check on me when I'm in Mars, Dr. Harris. <laughs> sure. So when everything is a field of energy, how, so nothing should be random. Isn't that true? That is exactly true. Because I think, I always thought life, in a way, is random. Uh, no, it is not random. Imagine, imagine you have like about 200 round uh, uh, magnets, like ball type magnets, different sizes. You put them on a flat surface, they all interact with each other until they find their perfect balance. Now imagine you add one more in the in between, or Changes you the change whole. the size of one of them only, make it bigger or so. What will happen to the rest? Everything uh, has to change to accommodate. You see, uh -huh. there's no randomness. Right. We didn't see it. We thought it was random. We can make choices, unlimited number of choices. The choices means we bring in different uh, field of magnet energy into us. Whether we can accommodate it or not, that's a different story. But the fact is that the ch even though the choices are unlimited, every single choice will bring a defined reaction depending on the environment. This is the best, uh, I think this is the takeaway, take that nothing in life is random and everything, depending on our choices, the outcome is there. After all, our universe is a mathematical mind. So in mathematics, we don't yeah. have randomness. Yeah, no yeah. randomness. Dr. Parviz, I can't thank you enough. You know, I uh, by, by the week start, when it's, it's Sunday that I'm back at the clinic, I cannot wait for Tuesdays to come to get my dose. <laughs> and I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as myself. And I really hope that uh, in the future, uh, please do comment and uh, write down what you would like for us to talk about in our next podcast. Um, Dr. Parviz has a wealth of knowledge, as we all know, and I think we should really use it. And, and the mo amazing part of you is that, like you said, you, you're a teacher. You, this, is, this is your role in life. We all have our roles, and your role is to make this place a better place, which in return brings balance to you. Absolutely And that's true. what we're all looking yeah. for, the balance. Until next time, everyone, see you later and stay safe.